Hello and welcome back. Vanilla Skyrim only has one difficulty setting that you can adjust between Novice and Legendary, which by default is not a very robust system. Often when playing the game, your character would quickly overpower your enemies, and as a result, the content within Skyrim would become stale. Thanks to a large selection of mods, we can adjust the balance of the game in a variety of ways that make Skyrim more engaging, and ultimately more enjoyable to play. In this video, we will explore some mods that I personally think are the best at making Skyrim more of a challenge, and at the same time are compatible enough so you don't have to rework your entire mod list to enjoy them. So let's get started. First up is a very simple mod called Skill Zeroer. At the start of your playthrough, just after creating your character, you will be given the ability to reset all of your skills to level 1, instead of the normal level 15. This is intended to make the start of the game a more difficult experience and prolong the amount of time it takes for you to level your skills. There is also an option to set your health, magicka and stamina to 50 instead of 100 for an even more hardcore playing experience. As I said, this mod is very simple but simple ideas are often the best, and there are other mods that do the same thing, but in my experience, this one is the most compatible and has very few problems. It also doesn't make Skyrim inherently more difficult, but rather lets you start with a totally clean slate. Next, we're going to look at a couple of mods that modify how encounter zones work, and in my opinion, these two mods are essential for any mod list that wants more of a challenge from Skyrim. Firstly, what is an encounter zone? Any dungeon you come across when playing Skyrim is essentially an encounter zone. When you enter a dungeon or encounter zone, the game will automatically generate enemies that are close to your level. Meaning if you are level 10, when you enter a dungeon, the enemies will be level 10 as well. Encounter zones also have upper limits. So for example, Bleak Fool's Barrow, upper limit is level 20, so if you enter at level 30, the dungeon will only be set to 20. Each dungeon also has a leveled list and enemy multipliers that determines how the encounter zone will be populated, essentially creating more varied enemies inside a dungeon, ranging from easy enemies to hard and very hard. An example of a list would be the Draga level list, ranging from a normal Draga being encountered from level 1, a restless Draga from level 6, and so on until you encounter a Draga Deathlord at level 40. So now with all that knowledge, the first mod is called Arena and Encounter Zone Overhaul. This mod increases the leveled multipliers for enemies in encounter zones, so you will see higher level enemies earlier and hard enemies will be a higher level than you introducing more difficulty to all areas of the game in a more natural way. This mod also removes the maximum level limit on all encounter zones, so dungeons will continue to level with you as you progress your character. This goes in tandem with another great mod called Encounter Zones Unlocked, which prevents the game from freezing the level of the encounter zone when you first visit. For example, entering Bleak Fool's Barrow at level 10 will set the dungeon to level 10, but when you revisit at level 20, the dungeon will level with you to 20 instead of being locked at level 10 for the rest of your playthrough. Both of these mods do not add new enemies, so are free to use with other mods that do. They will simply distribute these new enemies to any dungeons around Skyrim with these new sets of rules for encounter zones. Now let's look at one of the best mods that adds more enemies, called Hand Placed Enemies, More Populated Spawns and Dungeons. This mod adds well over 1000 hand placed enemies to Skyrim, effectively increasing the number of enemies by approximately 50%, with emphasis focused on strategic and immersive locations, not just randomly adding enemies willy nilly. Archers, for example, will be on the high ground, and soldiers will be by doors to ambush you. However, the mod does take into account smaller rooms as to not overcrowd them with too many enemies. There are also a few new unique scenarios, such as swarms, where weaker enemies will try to overwhelm you by sheer numbers. 
This mod is great for making combat more engaging, especially for people who have done a large number of playthroughs of Skyrim, as you now no longer know where each enemy will spawn. Now for some mods that make enemies more difficult and varied. The first one is called High Level Enemies Redux, which adds new enemies for almost all of the Skyrim enemy types. Enemies will also progress with the player, for example the highest level bandit in vanilla Skyrim was level 28, but with this mod enemies keep scaling with you until about level 80. Just to be aware, this mod can make enemies very strong and difficult to fight. Another great mod is called Enemy Revolution of Skyrim, which utilizing the spell perk item distributor allows enemies to cast spells, perform shouts, and obtain perks or items that were previously only limited to the player, which in turn made combat a lot more difficult. This is a fantastic mod that also adds a great deal of variety to combat as enemies will no longer use the same old spells over and over again. It is also compatible with all of the popular spell mods such as Apocalypse or Arcanum. And thanks to a random system, you will encounter all spells and shouts at some point during your playthrough if you play long enough. This mod is a must have in my opinion, just alone for a more unique combat experience. Moving on from enemies, we have a couple of mods that change the menu mechanics for combat. The first is aptly named No Saving in Combat, which as you guessed it, doesn't allow you to save the game while you are in combat. This is really just to stop you from cheesing the game when a difficult situation arises. And the other similar mod is called Skyrim Souls. This mod takes a feature from Souls games which keeps the gameplay going in real time even while menus are open, so opening your inventory won't pause the game. This is again to stop you from cheesing the game but actually has pretty significant implications when trying to use potions for example in active combat and forces you to make better decisions when engaging an enemy. Next we're going to look at some mods that change our healing works during combat. And the first is a mod called Chasing the Dragon, which adds two new features related to potions. The first is Toxicity, that adds a drawback to consuming potions. Basically consuming too many potions will result in a toxic effect on your character causing you to lose vision and in extreme cases prevent passive regeneration of your primary stats. The toxicity of each potion is based on their value, so a valuable potion would be more toxic but if you have poison resistance you can mitigate this effect. The second drawback is called addiction, where each potion you consume has a chance to make you addicted, which is calculated the same way as toxicity with more expensive potions being more addictive. Once you do become addicted, it is treated like a disease. Initially you will receive a small buff, but leave it untreated, you will soon receive debuffs to your skills, movement speed and more. This mod makes you think before spamming potions in combat and doesn't give you that easy get out of jail card. It also puts more emphasis to the often forgotten stats of poison and disease resistance that will now become more important to you and your character. Another mod that kind of mirrors the last is called Restoration Rebalance. This mod makes all self healing spells heal over time rather than instantly. Oftentimes you would run into combat, guns blazing, take damage and then cast a healing spell to instantly regain your health, but no more. Utilizing restoration spells in combat now require a bit more thought and won't allow you to be overly aggressive. Ultimately, this mod encourages a lot more strategy to using restoration spells in combat that I really enjoy, and if you are smart, you could even use this to your advantage. Next is a loot mod called Scarcity. This mod reduces all types of loot found in the game, including any modded loot you have added. Weapons, armor, and gems will be harder to come across, and enchanted items become genuine treasures when you find one. The settings are adjustable, so you can choose between loot being 2 times or even 10 times less likely to appear. It's really subjective which option you choose or to use this mod at all, but it does make Skyrim more difficult by reducing the amount of items you find 
but also the amount of gold you accumulate over time. And lastly, the final mod today is for the hardcore players of Skyrim, called Die When Killed, a dead simple permadeath mod. So now, when your character dies, you will be sent to the main menu and will not be able to load back in. I'm not sure if I would recommend this mod, but I'm sure some people will like the increased adrenaline of knowing if you die, you lose your character, similar to hardcore modes of other games. Only try this if you are prepared to lose everything. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you found a couple of new mods to try, and I will see you again next time. Cheers.